Hey guys, welcome to episode 12 of Cooking Around the Planet, the show where we learn about and cook a recipe from every single country until we've done them all. If you're new here, I'm Austin, that's my wife Jess, and as always, star of the show, Otto. <laughs> my wife and I, and even Otto, share a love for food, culture, and travel, and that's what this show is all about. So welcome into our kitchen. Last week, we made our way to Serbia and made the popular dish known as sarma. If you were to walk into our home while we were making that, you would have thought you were at your grandma's house. Home cooking at its finest. If you get a chance, go back and check that episode out. As always, with only a week to prep, we move forward to week 12. I'm pumped about this one, a country full of amazing dishes. If we were to fly to this country from Serbia, we'd head south, right over the Mediterranean Sea, and head east to the country of Lebanon. If you've never had Lebanese food before, you're missing out, simple as that. So, with that being said, let's get right into the episode. This week's episode, we are gonna be making an iconic Lebanese dish known as kibbe. So, there's a few ways to make kibbe. Um, there's a raw version, which we are not against, but I feel like if we're gonna have the raw version, we probably want somebody that's Lebanese to make that for us first before we try to do it ourselves. We're gonna try the fried version. I've heard it called a kibbe nugget. But what kibbe is, is you use some sort of ground meat, lamb being a popular choice. Unfortunately, we couldn't find any lamb, so we're just gonna use ground beef. But a big component of this dish is something called bulgur wheat. I actually had to order this on Amazon. It just came in about five minutes ago. <laughs> but we're rocking and rolling. This is a cracked wheat. Um, I've heard it compared to, once it's cooked, the consistency of like quinoa. So we're gonna actually um, mix that in with ground beef. We're gonna make this like pocket and we're gonna fill that with more meat and onions. And we're gonna form it all together into like of Hey Arnold's head, football head, it's like a football. <laughs> and then we're gonna fry it. And hey, said it here before, you had me a fry. <laughs> and then, after we make that, we're gonna make some hummus for the first time ever. I've been wanting to for so long, and we're finally gonna do it. So, let's get right into it. First thing with the kibbe is we are going to take one cup, I've heard it's also uh, like natural cereal, like this is cereal. And you can eat it like cereal, so like. So in the morning we're having bulgur wheat yeah. for breakfast? Yeah. <laughs> With some milk? <laughs> and there's health benefits to this too, I was reading. Don't quote me on that, I just saw a very brief Google. <laughs> so we're gonna go two cup, or I'm sorry, we're gonna go one cup. And then we are going to fill this with water just until it covers it. Gotta mix it in real quick. We're gonna set this aside for about 10 minutes. All that wheat is gonna soak up that water. So while that sits, I'm gonna send it over to Jess to maybe introduce you to the beautiful country of Lebanon. Known as one of the oldest countries in the world with over 5,000 years of history, Lebanon is a small country located in West Asia. It is bordered by Syria to the north and east of the country, and then Israel to the south and the Mediterranean Sea to the west. The country is divided into eight governments. It is said to have been rebuilt from ashes over eight times throughout history. Lebanon has an estimated population of about 5.2 million people, and while an official census has not been taken since 1932, most of Authorities will say 95% of the population is Arab and 4% are Armenian and the remaining 1% being a combination of Syrian, Palestinian, and Iranian. Although saying the majority of the population is Arab in Lebanon is really a general kind of blanketed statement as many of the Arab people in Lebanon are very diverse and from different backgrounds. So because of that, Lebanon typically follows a 
religious chart when it comes to demographics versus an ethnic chart. Lebanon has 18 recognized religions in the country, with Islam being the largest at 55%, Christians making up about 40%, and the Druze making up about 5%. Of the Muslim community, about half are Sunni and the other half are Shia. And of the Christian group, the majority are Maronite and Malachite Catholics, following Greek Orthodox and Armenian Apostolic. The Druze community is an ethno-religious group. Their belief system is mostly secretive, but incorporates elements of Islam, Christianity, Hinduism, Buddhism, and many other philosophies and beliefs. Their theology is based on an esoteric interpretation of scripture, which emphasizes the role of the mind and truthfulness, and they also believe in reincarnation. In this religion, they do not accept converts, so you must be born into it. Lebanon is estimated to be the country with the highest number of refugees in the entire world, at about 1.5 million, mostly Syria, as many people fled the country of Syria after the 2011 war broke out. Lebanon's coastal regions were home to the ancient Phoenicians at around 2500 BC. Phoenicians were known for their seafaring trade systems and have been credited with the invention of the first ever alphabet which then inspired the Greek alphabet and the Latin alphabet. All right, the vulgar has really soaked up all that water. So next we are gonna go in with tree powder, about a half a tablespoon, some salt. Mix that all in. Feel free to add a little extra curry powder if you want. I put a lot in there. <laughs> it's become my new favorite seasoning. <laughs> but I will. <laughs> All right, next step, we're gonna take half of an onion. You don't really have to chop them up, just kind of like that. And we're gonna go back in our food processor. Yeah, just enough to blend that onion in there. Back in our bowl. All right, we got a pound of ground beef here. We're only gonna use half for this part. We're gonna save the other half for later. We're gonna mix these two together to form the dough that we're gonna use for our pockets later on. So, I've seen where they kinda, of, some water on their hands, and we're just gonna go right in. This comes out. <laughs> I hope so. They get real intense with it, I've seen. You can use a food processor for this part I've seen, but we're doing it the real way. All right, we got it kinda of consistency I've seen. We're gonna, Cover this up, throw it in the fridge for about 20, 25 minutes. Um, that's gonna help that dough come together and stay solidified once we make those pockets. So while this sits in the fridge, while I wash my hands, I'm gonna send it back over to Jess to tell you more about the country of Lebanon. Beyond the time of the ancient Phoenicians, the region later came under the influence of various empires, including the Assyrians, the Babylonians, the Persians, and the Greeks. In 64 BC, Lebanon became a part of the Roman Empire and subsequently the Byzantine Empire. It was during this time that the country really began to develop its road systems and its biggest cities. In the 7th century, Lebanon was captured by Arab Muslims and became a part of the Umayyad and the Abbasid Caliphates. In the 16th century, Lebanon fell under the Ottoman Empire and remained this way for about 400 years. After World War I and the fall of the Ottoman Empire, Lebanon was placed under French mandate by the League of Nations. This period saw significant modernization and the establishment of Lebanon's current borders. In 1943, Lebanon gained full independence from France, and despite being involved in a Lebanese civil war and several other wars within the region, the city of Beirut became a financial and cultural hub of the Middle East. All right, while the dough finishes up in the fridge, we're gonna make the filling that is going in the pocket. So, we're gonna start, we got a little oil, we're gonna go uh, half of a white onion. Next, we're gonna go in with one clove of garlic. Saute that up for a couple of minutes. And next, we're gonna add some curry powder, cumin, pepper, 
And now typically in Kiba, they use pine nuts. We were at our local grocery store. Pine nuts are about $9 a bag for like a small bag. So I looked up to see what was the most comparable as far as texture, flavor. Macadamia nuts came up, found a little bag, $2.99. That's what we're gonna be using. So we're gonna toss these in there, roast those up with that. We're gonna add in the other half pound of our ground beef. Purge this together. Wow, this is uh, <laughs> looking phenomenal. The house smells great. There was a downwind this evening. People might be coming by the house from up. The downwind, they're coming from this. This man to smell. I was thinking like just this over some rice and a veggie. Woo. Sign gonna, me up. Sign her up. Do you one better. We're gonna put this in a pocket and we're gonna fry it. Dream. And there's hummus that we're gonna give a shot at at making. Good Lord. So this is all done. We're gonna set this aside. We're gonna get our dough out and we're trying to make some pockets. As old as Lebanon is, there are a ton of historical sites and ruins all throughout the country. In fact, they have found ancient Phoenician temples buried under churches, buried under mosques. Lebanon is home to five UNESCO World Heritage Sites. One of them being the city of Baalbek, which has a history dating back 11,000 years and is said to be the oldest continuously inhabited city in the entire world. The city is home to two of the largest Roman temples, the Temple of Jupiter and the Temple of Bacchus. The latter still has many ancient columns still intact, reaching heights of up to 66 feet tall, supporting richly carved tablets, which feature lions, bulls, geometric shapes, and floral patterns. Not only is Lebanon a treasure trove of historical monuments, it is also absolutely stunning with a very diverse natural geography. Coastline features serene sandy beaches and breathtaking cliffs. The Mount Lebanon and anti-Lebanon mountain ranges reach peaks as high as 10,000 feet above sea level, which offers hiking in the summer and are popular ski destinations in the winter. The Bacaw Valley, located in between these two mountain ranges, are known for its fertile soil. This region features over 30 wineries and grows acres of fruit trees, cotton, corn, wheat, and many types of vegetables. The cedar tree is a national symbol of Lebanon as it is featured on the country's flag and is deeply intertwined with the culture, history, and identity of the country. Not only is the wood valued as an economic resource noted for its durability, quality, and resistance to decay, it is also seen as a symbol of immortality and enduring spirit. There are many cedar forests located throughout Lebanon, one of the most notable being Cedars of the Gods in the Kadisha Valley are major tourist attractions as this forest has been mentioned in ancient and biblical texts many times throughout history. Lebanese cuisine has ancient roots and follows a mostly Mediterranean based tradition. In fact, many dishes eaten today can be traced back thousands of years. The cuisine includes an abundance of whole grains, fruits, herbs, spices, and vegetables, fresh fish, and seafood. And when red meat is eaten, it is typically lamb or goat. A common style of serving food is called meze, which is similar to Spanish tapas. It's a variety of many small dishes eaten either as appetizers or as a multi-course meal in itself. A traditional meze can have 15 to 20 different plates of food, with traditional dishes including pickled vegetables, tabbouleh, hummus, baba ganoush, kibbeh, which we featured today, stuffed grape leaves, pita bread, and grilled meats, seafood, and stews. All right, our dough has been sitting for about 25 minutes. We got our filling ready. We got some cold water we're gonna use for our hands. I guess probably to prevent sticking and Fingers crossed, we're gonna give it our best shot here. Also, we got some oil heating up. That way, once these things are ready, we can just drop them right in the oil. 
Cold water there. Pour them into kind of, I don't even know what would the... Little rocks. <laughs> yeah. Little ovals. And then what I've seen is they kind of make like a little pocket. Form it around here. Definitely not perfect, but it's still staying together. That was the big uh, potential worry. I'm just gonna fill that. It's okay. We're going to try to close that in. Then we're gonna get a little bit more water. And we're gonna form it into that shape, the iconic Kibe shape. All right, there's one, one down. Let's try another. wants to try to come apart but staying just enough to make do and once you got it in there you can kind of really mold it without worrying about it coming out look at that all right our kibbe is ready for the oil let's hope our oil is hot enough Oh, that's what you like to hear. I do three in there. Really get the party going. Oh. All right, we just took our first one out a little uh, busted open on us, but hey, all good. I think this one did as well. But I think okay. This one's trying to bust open, but. It didn't. So we still got five more to try to get it right. So wish us good luck. All right, let's see if this one. Oh, we can stay together. Oh. Whoa. We are going to make some hummus. I've been wanting to make hummus for 37 years <laughs> and I never have done it. <laughs> and there's no time like the present. I mean, the universe just, me and hummus, we just, you go to the store and you buy hummus. It's like, what, $24? You eat it in like 10 minutes. You can go get some canned garbanzo beans, chickpeas. Jess and I had a little- A debate? Not even a debate, we just both didn't know. But Jess was like, oh, chickpeas. I was like, oh, I think they they use garbanzo beans. Turns out, the same thing. One in the same. <laughs> so, you can use fresh garbanzo beans. I think they soak them overnight. There's a whole process. Um, we only got a week. Canned garbanzo beans, or chickpeas, as Jess calls them. And hummus is very little ingredients, very healthy comes together really, really quick. Um, so let's get right into it. We have a food processor here. I've seen people use a blender. Um, so if you don't have a processor, I think you can still get away with using a blender. First thing you're gonna do, take two pieces of garlic, put them in there. We're just gonna chop these up real quick. A couple blitzes. <laughs> Really did anything. <laughs> so now we are gonna go in with our garbanzo beans. By the way, some people do, you could kind of, let me see if I can get one here. Some They have like a shell on them. The people actually go in there and pick each shell off. Oh wow. Because it, it could potentially cause it to be not as creamy, mm -hmm. but some people just throw them in there. Whole big fan of using everything. So we're just gonna put it all in there. First, we're gonna add, we'll be using about two thirds cup water, but we're gonna add it very slowly. So we're just gonna add a little bit. And then we're gonna blend, we're gonna add, we're gonna keep doing that until this thing kind of smooths out. It's starting to 
come together. What I forgot to add after we added the beans was lemon juice. We got about, about a fourth cup fresh squeezed lemon juice. go in with our tahini sauce. I guess you don't want to add this at the beginning because it can mess up the uh, consistency. So you want to add it at the end. About two thirds cup. Also forgot, I'm supposed to add salt at the beginning. <laughs> We're gonna add some salt here. Oh. Wow. Well, that looks like hummus. Looks like I've hummus. I've never seen hummus. <laughs> <laughs> All right, final step. And add about two tablespoons of olive oil. We have avocado oil for for this, but I think it'll work. Oh. All right. So you're supposed to kind of. Taste it, add salt, add lemon, but for the sake of the show and for trying it all at the end for the first time, we're going to try it with our kibba for the first time. So but let's see what this uh, consistency looks like. Okay. Wow, that's a lot of hummus. That's what I was just about to say. Love that. And that's about, or not about, that is two cans of chickpeas. Totaling cost about... Uh, the chickpeas, I went ahead and got the organic, spent the extra 50 cents a piece. You got three bucks, then you got two lemons, that's at our place is 50 cents. The tahini was six bucks, but you can get more than just, you know. So essentially that tahini, you probably use two bucks of it. I don't know, maybe five bucks? <laughs> this, this is a lot of... <laughs> a lot of hummus. Oh, I smell it. I gotta work on my uh, plating of the hummus. I think it's <laughs> <laughs> It was supposed to look a lot. Okay. Wow. Hummus art. Wow. Gorgeous. All right, we're gonna go get our kibbe. Bring everything over here, and we're gonna. Give it a try. I'm excited. Wow. Authentic kibbe and hummus. All right, Jess. My mouth is water. Yeah, we're starving. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hummus first. Man, I'm excited about that hummus. I'm so excited. <laughs> if I can scoop it. <laughs> Life is forever changed by being able to make your own hummus. It tastes spot on to any other hummus I've ever had. Wow. I just wanna put my whole face in it. What's like the main flavor you taste? I do taste a lot of the lemon, mm -hmm. which I was surprised to even see lemon in hummus. I didn't realize that it was in there, but the combination of the lemon and the garlic just like makes it taste like that Mediterranean delicious hummus. <laughs> Creamy. the garlic. Mm. It's super, super creamy. That's like $40 a hummus right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Open a hummus stand. <laughs> First time making hummus. Turned out really well. Don't ever buy hummus. Make your own. Because it's, re it's really, really easy and really, really cheap. 
and probably a lot better for you. And it tastes better than any hummus that I've had. And also you can add things to it to make it spicy or make it this or that. But that, just a simple classic hummus, phenomenal. Phenomenal. That's exciting. By the spoonful, to the face. Catch me down here at midnight sleepwalking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, kibbe time. All right. All right, I'm gonna reach for one of these that opened up so my <laughs> mouth doesn't catch on fire. It's like three weeks in a row you burn your face off. Yeah, so it's worth it every time. <laughs> Let's see. Alrighty. Oh. <laughs> I'm so curious about these things. They have everything in it that I want. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait to try it all together. Mm -hmm. What would you compare it to? I was just trying to figure that out. Yeah, I don't know. There's nothing it compares to just by the ingredients. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like the best donut of all time. It Savory is. donut. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. I'm really excited about this. <laughs> With the cur curry seasoning. Mm -hmm. I love the curry powder so much. And this is like if someone had a delicious meatloaf <laughs> and then a crunchy curry dough <laughs> wrapped around it. So <laughs> I'm sold. All right, you have to try. Okay. It. Do you want to try this one or a different one? Sorry. Oh, that the breading of the dough. So good. I got the macadamia crunch. Mm, nice. And that beef. And the onion. It's like here's there's everything you need in life. In a little in a little little dough ball. A little fried dough ball. Here you go. From Lebanon to you. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. In a million years until when I found this recipe three, four days ago, would I ever think I would have anything like this? And I'm so glad I have. Oh, well, oh yeah. <laughs> God. Over wheat. What <laughs> is that? It's phenomenal. Truly. Outstanding, extraordinary. I saw that that is Lebanon's national dish. I know why. <laughs> I know why. Explains itself. <laughs> if you want to experience what we've just experienced, watch that video back again, or watch another video. Just watch a video or find a recipe on how to make those if you want your life changed. Do yourself a favor. Just do yourself a favor. Lebanon, thank you. Phenomenal. We'll be making those for a lifetime to come. That will be in the Reeves cookbook from here on out. Give it up. We did it. Episode 12, week 12, country number 12 in the books. Oh, the, the, the bucket. I forgot about the bucket. <laughs> we gotta do one more. <laughs> we gotta do one more. Here we go. To the bucket we go, if the GoPro will allow us. You guys saw in last video, we lost some video footage. It's because of the GoPro. Could be the last GoPro I ever have. Moving on. Moving on. I was gonna say, with Lebanon, Yep. a lot of the countries have been like, oh, that'd be a cool place to go. But Lebanon, I'm like, I'm ready to go to Lebanon. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds History, awesome. The nature. Yeah. Off the charts. The food. The food. Hello. Everywhere I was reading was saying, it. if you haven't heard or tried Lebanese food, you're missing out. And it's like some of the best food you'll probably ever have. They care a lot about their food. Yeah. 
It's a whole... It's, it's, it's a part of their culture, really. Without further ado. Without further ado, where will the bucket hat take us next week? We were blessed to go to Lebanon and have a phenomenal meal. Where will we go to next? Three, two, one. Oh. <gasps> All right, no lie, the camera literally froze as she, as she was about to read the country and she is keeping her enthusiastic pose because she, she's excited about this. <laughs> I'm so curious. Three, two, one. Cyprus, which is just off the coast of Lebanon. Oh, what are the odds of that? we just jumped. Or puddle jumping, barely. And that's, never heard of that country. Didn't know there was a country named Cyprus. I didn't until today when I was doing my research on And you would have never known. Never would have known. But maybe they'll have similar food and we can have more of this deliciousness. All right. Well, that's a wrap on week 12. We'll see you back here next week for episode 13 as we head to Cyprus. So. Small island. Small island. All right, guys, have a great week. We'll see you soon. There you go, bud. What do you think? What do you think? Is that good? <laughs>